number three at the Hardcore WoW Challenge. Our Warlock got unfairly massacred in a cave. Our Paladin got cheap-shotted by critical shots. And here we are on our Rogue, trying again at this challenge. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some money stuff. There's some fun stuff to talk about money stuff, talk about work, um, potentially some cosplay stuff. So we got a whole lot on the agenda. As always, we'll let you know some people join in first, and then we'll get to talking. Ooh, that's hot tea. Extra tea today, because um, my anxiety has been so 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 bad lately and emmy recommended like maybe maybe you just gotta take it easy on the um caffeine for a little bit and like i know that she's right and i know that it's really really hard because i love myself some coffee but i think it's time to uh give the caffeine a little bit of a rest so we're doing decaf tea to try and keep the vibes nice and chill so that I don't have a horrible panic attack again. It's Bubbles crazy. here. Welcome in, Bubble. How is Aruba? Glad to see you here. We've been waiting for Bubble to join because Bubble said that she has a topic for us today. But we have been waiting for them to be able to join to be able to do it. Dragon Ghost is here. Hello, dragon. Welcome in, dragon. Yes, we want the burning topic. Let us, let us hear the burning topic, please. Aruba's amazing. We've been having dinner on the beach and watched the sunset while eating. Now, see that sounds. Incredible. That's why our favorite hotel is has a hot tub, so we can just sit in the hot tub, watch the sunset, eat like it is. It is one heck of a good time. So, I agree with that one hundred percent. Dexter's here as well. Good morning, Dexter. I'm also glad Dragon's here because Dragon uh, gave us some topic information for today as well. Some things that kind of sparked something that I think will be interesting to talk about. So. Very excited to have you all here, all chatting, all ready for the burning topics of the day. We're just waiting on those topics. Oh, wait, okay, level 13, we can take this one. First topic of the day. We're going to talk about money today. Because uh, Dragon was talking about some stuff in the Discord, and it kind of related to, like, this This blew me away. Uh, I've been watching Malcolm in the Middle because I run out of TV shows to get through, so I needed something. I was like, oh, Malcolm in the Middle. I remember that being a pretty good show. So I, I don't remember exactly when Malcolm in the Middle came out, but I'm pretty sure it was, like, what, early 2000s? Maybe, maybe mid-2000s? Like, it's not a... Not a super old show. And, oh, this this dude is messing me up. What the heck? This, uh... This pig almost just took us out there. Holy cow. All right, let's, let's finish off the pig. And then I see we've got the burning topic in the chat. Finally ready for that. Oh, we, we almost just lost the run right there again. I had to burn a whole potion and a cooldown. So my burning topic is, what does the Catholic community church feel about games that make you sin, i.e. D&D when you have to lie and persuade people, or games where you kill, or sims where you uh, make your sim cheat on their spouse? Okay, that's an interesting topic, and there's not, there's not one firm answer on it, so I'll do my best to cover all, all of it. So... There's not an official church stance, so much of the opinions come from priests and a lot of extra, uh, the, the opinions come from exorcists who weigh in on the topic, and then there's the lay people like me who weigh in as well. So 
there exists some old school priests who are also exorcists who claim you know that video games are a passage to demon activity and any video games you play are opening you up to demonic possession and that sort of thing. I personally don't really vibe with that school of thought, but it does exist out there. Oh, we're we're in trouble. We're running. We're running. Uh, so Father Rippinger, who is the one who's most often quoted when we're talking about things like that, he's the exorcist who says, you know, the video games can open up demonic portals and so you shouldn't touch it. You know, Harry Potter's evil and all that we've discussed in the past. So he says there's there's certain sins that cannot be copied and there are sins that can be copied. His logic is that like if you're playing Grand Theft Auto and you shoot someone, you're not actually committing murder, right? You're you're playing a video game. It is a fantasy and thus that fantasy you're you're replicating a sin but since it doesn't actually impact anyone and it doesn't actually exist, that is okay. But on the same hand, going like into the adult lounges in Grand Theft Auto and and viewing uh, graphic content, for example, that doesn't matter whether it's fantasy or not, that is still a sinful action. So with that, I would agree with him that there are certain things that you can do in video games because you understand like, hey, it's a fantasy and there's other things that you can say, hey, you know, whether that's a fantasy or not, that is that is not something that we can do. That much I agree with him on. He actually specifically talks about Dungeons & Dragons 2 and says that when you, when you play Dungeons & Dragons and you worship a, a false god in Dungeons & Dragons, you are actually worshiping that false god or that demon in real life and opening yourself up to possession and great evil. And I, I firmly disagree with that. Um, and he's, he's talked about like, and this is the, the one that I always disagree with him on. Like he says, you know, Harry Potter has real witchcraft and real spells written into it. And when I tell people, you know, like, well, it's, it's just Latin. It's not real. They come back with, well, you know, it's, it's Latin based off of ancient Islamic languages that actually have curses and spells in them. So it is teaching how to really do the spells. That's his argument for Dungeons and Dragons as well. That, you know, like. Uh, Baal is the god of murder in Baldur's Gate, and you can worship Baal, and Baal has been featured, you know, in the Bible and, and parts of the Israelite religion, and therefore, if you're worshiping Baal as a cleric of Baal in Baldur's Gate, then you're worshiping Baal in real life, and therefore giving power to demon and possession and all that, and I just... I can't find a leg to stand on in that argument. I just, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. It, it's clearly just a fantasy. And, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to say that, you know, if your actions in a fantasy can do things like that, then what about like all the people who watch TV, like uh, TV that encourages people to cheat on their spouses or reality TV, like that's worshiping a, a different God altogether and causing way more harm in society. So I just, I, I don't like his arguments with that. So when it comes to video games and Catholicism, I actually made a video. So go check out the video on it. Hey, I go in depth on it. Basically, I encourage everyone to, to use critical thinking on it. And when you're looking at the game, you need to one, be able to say, can I separate reality from this game? Can I understand that it's a fantasy? And if that's true, then can I do this without becoming obsessed with it, without, you know, stealing the game because I can't afford it, without being prone to doing sins in real life because of it? And as you go down this checklist, you know, if you can say, I can do all these things and I'll be fine, then it's probably an okay game for you to play. Dungeons & Dragons is one of those. But if you can't, then then maybe you shouldn't. And like a, a great example of that is um, Grand Theft Auto is one of those games I think that's really easy to pick on. Uh, so we'll say like Call of Duty, for example. Call of Duty, I see no problem with playing Call of Duty. But if someone else plays Call of Duty and they get the urge, you know what, I kind of really want to go shoot someone because it looks fun in Call of Duty. Well, maybe that game's not good for you to play. So it's not, 
it's not one strong answer across the board, right? It's going to be each individual person needs to to look at it and say, is this something that I can handle or is this something I cannot handle? Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of like anime waifu games that exist out of there that, you know, some people can play those games and have no problem because they, they have no no attraction or problems when it comes to to that, whereas other people have, you know, that disordered desire to say that, you know, I, I'm, I'm really, I, I see those pixelated anime girls and it, it makes me feel things, well, then maybe you should avoid that game because you shouldn't be putting yourself in a situation where you could potentially be sinning. Good topic, though. It's a great topic. Like I said, I actually made a whole video on it on my channel because it's like the number one question right now on the Catholic forums. Every day someone was asking, can I play this video game? Can I play that video game? So I thought I would try and answer it, you know, once and for all rather than answering it every single day, every time someone asks it, you know? But so I was watching Malcolm in the Middle. And like I said, Malcolm in the Middle came out, I, I want to say like 2004, 2005. Like, it's kind of, uh, kind of old. And uh, one of the characters runs away from home and rents an apartment in, um, in the bad part of town. And he's bragging about how affordable it is, you know, even though it's, it's a rundown apartment and kind of in a bad part of town. Rent, he said, was $375 a month for a one-bedroom with, um with utilities included and like that's mind-blowing to me that uh what 20 years ago maybe a little bit more that that was like a reasonable rent in the bad part of town like could you imagine finding an apartment for 375 dollars in 2023 like that that's just unheard of so i'm safe to name sims as my school-age bullies and unalive them you know um that's not quite The Sims, but isn't that what the Columbine kids basically did with Doom? So that one probably, that one probably edges on the the side of maybe we shouldn't do that <laughs> because that you know that that's a whole whole bad ordeal right there. <clears throat> yeah. But no, I wouldn't say that it's a sin to say like. Put your sin in, or your uh, sim in, in the pool and delete the ladder. I mean, who, who among us hasn't done that at least once, right? Who, who hasn't gone for the eternal swim because their sim did something wrong? <laughs> I still can't believe my first apartment was four hundred and fifty dollars, and the landlord acted like that was steep. Emmy and I, our first apartment was. Five hundred and forty-five dollars a month, and we rented a two-bedroom because we wanted extra space. So, five hundred forty-five dollars for two bedrooms, trash and water, and I want to say electricity included. Like, amazingly good. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure rent in the same place is now well over eight or nine hundred dollars, so definitely a steal. And our mortgage, when we first got our mortgage, it was only like seven hundred and something dollars, so like it wasn't that much more expensive just to have the house. Like it's one of those things where it made sense. Nowadays, buying a house makes sense because rent's so expensive. That's that's if you can get it right. Like that that's if you can get into the house. So yeah. Rent was incredibly cheap. Why is this coyote green? Did I find a shiny coyote? I think we encountered our first shiny. Oh, there he goes. Back to normal. See, we need murloc eyes, gore tusks, stow, snouts. Okay, we need to go back over here. But money is one of those things like... I, that's one of the topics I want to talk about today was just the money in general, but like, as I've said before, I got super blessed with the job I have now. And even though I'm losing that job and I have no idea what I'm going to do and, you know, there's there's occasional stress and panic attacks over what am I going to do with my life. You know, I, I was very blessed to have this job that pays way too much money 
and like I was I've just recently been like really realizing as I'm, I'm preparing to say okay we need to to clamp down and make sure that we're being okay with the unemployment and losing our job and all that just like how how blase I've gotten with money because like when Dragon Ghost was talking about the, the student loans and stuff in Discord and take home pay and all that like Emmy was having a bad day the other day and like I thought nothing against it about going to, to Fred Meyer and dropping almost a hundred dollars on oh we'll get uh you know some stuff to make her feel better and a board game to play together and some special food stuff that'll make for a good dinner and just like dropping a hundred dollars casually I understand like that's that's a huge blessing that most people don't get to enjoy right now. So I've really been thinking about how much I need to uh, count my blessings on. Wow, I've had it had it too good for too long because being able to just throw $100 out for fun like that is just outrageous. Or like going, um, there's a, a Thai restaurant we like to go to. We don't go there so much anymore because it's, it's bare minimum if we go out like 45 to 60 dollars just to get the food and, like the food's good i love it but you know that, that's that's so much money when people are struggling to afford food and pay their bills say you know what i'm gonna throw 60 dollars for some thai food and a hundred dollars on board games and fun just like that's that's so outrageous how how much money things actually cost so i'm really trying to take count of that and again, count my blessings. I've had it pretty good for probably too long and got to refigure these things out. Let's see. We need that sack of oats, but uh, there's like 20 dudes there. So that doesn't seem... That's not worth it. Not having the money to afford stuff makes life very stressful. That That's that's what I'm worried about. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't had to like worry about that in a while and I'm, I'm i'm very not looking forward to that like i didn't realize this was a thing like people were talking about like the, it's like a huge thing of relief that i didn't realize people like felt and had but like having all of my bills are just set on auto pay i never have to worry about you know worry about them because they just automatically come out and i don't have to think about it and other people talk about how like you they can't do that because they have to wait for paychecks to come in and you never know which bills you're gonna need to wait on and what's coming in late and then overdraft fees and all that sort of thing. Like I didn't realize how how big of a deal it was to be able to just put everything on auto pay and not have to think about it at all. Like it's just it's just taken care of. <clears throat> and even better than that, like it's I put it all on my credit card so that I get points off of it. And so it's like, it's one of those things you don't realize you're taking for granted until, until you have to reevaluate it. Trying to find a job that pays better, but not having luck. I understand that. Um, before all this job stuff came up, I had, uh, I had been looking for a job casually for a while and, and I, I couldn't even get an interview and that was casually looking like I can't imagine having to go back into the job market how much this is going to suck. I am definitely not looking forward to having to apply for jobs again. But even worse, like, what happens when that deadline starts to loom, right? Like, yes, I'm getting some lump sum up front. And that's awesome, but like, what happens when it's been four months and I still can't find a job? What happens when it's at five months and I still can't find a job? And now, you know, now the the mortgage coming due and I still haven't found something. Like, I, I'm, I am not looking forward to that. I, I'm definitely uh, scared of that idea. So. I, I'm trying not to think too much about it because right now I just got to make it to November. You know, I got to make it to the severance pay and make it to the getting fired. And then once we've made it past there, you know, I can worry about the next, the next part after that. But part of what makes it so hard is like looking at the numbers, I know that I can't take another job right now. So my only option is to wait this out and then have no job and look for a job once I'm already, you know, there. So 
See if this guy wants to party up for Murlocs. Live in a small town, there isn't anything available. I'm trying to find scholarships to help pay off student loans. But I don't want to do that because that means having to pay someone back in the future. Yeah. Um, definitely understand that. Like, part of the problem is, like, school just doesn't... Unless you have, like, a scholarship that you don't have to pay back, school doesn't make sense for for everyone because it's just so expensive because like okay you you go and uh get your degree but then you're 30 40 50 thousand dollars in debt like it's just outrageous right like you don't want to start your life off two hundred thousand dollars in debt dad's gonna help me out a little make it a little less stressful that is excellent family is good for that School is useless. I mean, I don't want to say that because I don't want, you know, I, I don't want to be that guy who keeps people from getting education. I think education is important, but without a doubt, uh, you know, half the schools, the degrees are useless. You're only getting it because they say you have to get a degree and that it, they, it's only useful because they say you have to have it. Like a lot of state jobs say you have to have a degree for no reason other than you have to have a degree. <clears throat> Forget a job, live a life of freedom, use your severance to build a van and live off grid. School is useless, paid too much for a useless degree. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, Dexter, I have thought about the van life um, prospect. I, I, have, I have considered that of maybe we should just get a van and do, do, do van lifing for a little bit. But, <clears throat> like... I don't know. Everyone wants to van life until you have to poop in a toilet that doesn't flush. That's uh, that's what someone told me online, and that made a whole lot of sense to me. So, uh, yeah, I I do think, I do think uh, it's overrated a little bit. But at the same time, that freedom definitely sounds sounds wonderful. And I would love like for photography and drone work, like. I'll tell you what, if, if you, my community, can support me, I will gladly open a Patreon and do a van life vlog for y'all, but, you know, considering there's only, like, four of you, and one of you is Emmy, <laughs> y'all gonna have to contribute, like, $300 a month if you want me to go van life in. <laughs> I was forced to go to college, and I found out it was my dad who filled out loans and paperwork and forged my name, so he had no choice but to help me. So... <clears throat> Yeah, um, as Emmy's saying, that is illegal. In most states, that is considered identity theft. The problem is, if you want to do something about it, you typically have to have to treat it as identity theft, which means typically, as far as I know, I'm not a lawyer or anything like that, you have to go through the court system. So you have to be willing to sue a family member and potentially put them in jail, and that's... That's tough. I know not a lot of people want to do that. Four years, I learned nothing uh, about hands-on techniques or application in my field. If I wanted to take the history of, I would have taken that class and not wasted my time. <laughs> Ooh, those are really good. Do you have better pants than that? You don't. I don't have proof or evidence to sue him. That's tough, because then it gets into lawyers and money and costs and all that. And that, that's just one of those things where, like, people talk about, like, oh, well, I worked so hard for it. Like, some people can work super hard for everything and still get dealt a bad hand, right? Like, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about being dealt a bad hand. It has nothing to do with hard work, determination, or anything like that. It's legitimately just sometimes you get dealt a bad hand, right? It sucks, but there's there's not a lot you can do about it. <clears throat> I knew I was getting into when I was majoring in this field, but the fact that it literally gets you nowhere near your field on top of how screwed the job market is makes me wish I did a trade instead of that. Oh, man, I... My dad tried to convince me to be a plumber, and... I'm very thankful that I did not become a plumber. 
uh, mostly because I know that trade jobs are hard on your knees, and there, there's a lot of reasons why I would not have been a good plumber. But, man, plumbers make bank. But also, like, his reasoning, like, I, I know it's, it's funny, but it's kind of a selfish reasoning, is, you know, my dad, uh, his brother, my uncle, is an electrician. My dad is pretty good at just general contracting. Like, he, he knows how to do electrical work. He knows how to do a lot of different kinds of work. But no one in the family was a plumber. So he's like, yeah, go be a plumber because we we need a family plumber. We need someone who's actually educated in plumbing so that we can get some of this stuff done. So I'm pretty sure he just wanted me to be a plumber so that I would do plumbing for the family. Uh, I do not have the patience for plumbing. So I, I could not be a plumber. I could not be an electrician. Scared of heights so I couldn't be a roofer. Like, I, I don't have a whole lot of options. Did the same to my sister. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Families... Families are rough like that, right? Family... Family means a lot, but sometimes family also is the one who, who screws you over the hardest, right? So, it, again, it puts you in a rough position because you, you can fight it, but it's... Again, do you really want to put, you know, your father, your family, whoever on trial, in jail, all those other things, like, it makes you question, do you actually want to do those things? And for a lot of people, the answer is no, so you just kind of, kind of live with it, right? Wish I never went to college. I, I, that, that's the other sad thing, is like, I, I have yet to meet really anyone who was like, I'm so glad I went to college. Like, maybe, maybe Emmy's sister, like, she got a pretty decent job straight out of college, so maybe she would have a same opinion, but pretty much everyone I've met is of the same opinion, which is that I really wish I would have never gone to college. And that's, that's such a bummer to hear, right? Like, college for so many people is supposed to be, like, the best years of your life, and... And there's supposed to be so many good things about it. And it's just, for, for most, they realize when they get out, like, I just wish I would have never done this. Because all it did was take money and time. Such a huge bummer. Alright. This guy's leaving, so. Oh, shoot. No, we're running. We're running. We're running. Oh, okay. He can take that dude on. Oh, respawn. That's not good. We're in some real trouble here. Dude. What are you doing? Heal yourself. Run. Do something. Dude. Make me too nervous with that. Way too nervous with that. <laughs> Those dynamic respawns almost got us. That was almost real bad. We, we almost just bought the farm there. Take it easy, Bubble. Thanks for dropping by. Too close for comfort on that one. For those of you who uh, haven't seen me playing this, this is just World of Warcraft, but with a twist. It's hardcore mode. If your character dies, that's it. Your character's dead. You, you have to delete them and start over. So, uh, you know, like right now... I'm at four hours invested in this character, so not terrible, but, um, you know, as you get higher in level, it, it sucks more and more to lose all that progress, right? So, uh, death has a whole lot, mean a lot more meaning in this mode. I resent college at this point. I graduated almost 15 years ago and paid off my loans in 2016. At least you were even able to pay off your loans, right? Like, there's some people who, um, you know, will never be able to pay off their loans, right? Like, the, the idea of paying off a student loan is a pipe dream. And that's, 
that's an abysmal position to be in. I couldn't imagine never being able to pay off a loan. It's me, I'll never pay off my loan with my pay grade. <laughs> See, and again, this is one of those other things, again, that I was just like, I didn't realize how just, like blessed and easy I was having it, because like, my student loans, I put on a credit card until my company paid it off for me. Like, I got super lucky. Like, I, I guess I won't say lucky. I didn't go to college at the normal age that kids my age were going to college because I couldn't afford it. So I guess I did make that sacrifice. And then later when I came back to it, you know, I, I could afford it because I had a company paying for it. So I don't, don't necessarily know that I would call that luck so much as that was just having to make a different decision. How about you pay off our loans? Well, um, you know, I, I would consider it, but as... I, I don't know if you've been in the stream since then, so I, I got called into the office and my, my work is leaving our area, so um, they have given me advance notice that as of November 14th, I will no longer have a job. So I can't can't afford the extra expenses right now because I'm soon going to join the ranks of unemployed and having no idea what I'm doing with my life. My plan right now, um, my plan right now is to do um, a Ben from Parks and Rec and do some stop motion photography and make a board game. Uh, I got a board game in my mind that I want to create, so I figured I'll just, I'll do Ben for like three months. I'll shoot a little stop motion film. I'll, I'll make a board game, Cones of Dunshire, and then, then go find a job doing something. I don't want to do banking anymore, so, uh, who knows what what it is. Some random Canadian dude. Canadian paladin. Pretty sure I'm getting a job in the next couple weeks, so I'm going to be a house husband. I do, I do need to learn to cook. And that, um, that, that intimidates me a little bit. Like, my, my biggest thing with cooking... Well, there's two big things with cooking that I have. One, I hate touching raw meat, which, of course, makes cooking hard. Um, and two, I don't like to, to follow recipes. You know, I like to follow my heart. So I'll eat anything, right? Uh, I'll throw a tortilla down, some Kraft singles, put a pepperoni on it, call it pizza, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll put mashed potatoes and hot sauce and oatmeal together and call it whatever. But, you know... If I'm cooking for Emmy, or I'm actually cooking, like, family dinner, then I need to do a little bit better. So, I'm going to have to learn to cook some meat and, and do something with it. I disgust you. <laughs> ooh, ooh, speaking of uh, cooking stuff, um... I got ghost pepper chili flakes yesterday, so I'm really, really excited to uh, get to put that on something, make some really, really spicy, probably oatmeal. I gotta eat more oatmeal. I'm eating too many eggs for breakfast because eggs are easy and fast, so um, yeah, ghost peppers. Boyfriend and I have been talking about moving, but I haven't decided yet. See that? We've talked about moving too, especially with this job change coming up. It's like we talked about going to Maine. We've talked about Alaska. Like now that my, my parents retired and they're moving all over the country, like there's not a whole lot holding me down here. So maybe, maybe it's time to go move and do something else. I don't know. There's a lot of opportunity. Why oatmeal and spicy stuff? I thought I was having weird cravings. So, um... The reason why I do oatmeal and spicy stuff is because oatmeal is pretty gross. And in order to make oatmeal good, you have to put a bunch of like sugar, fat, butter, cream, stuff like that into it. Uh, fruit, which is full of sugar. And 
I don't tr try to eat any of that. So hot sauce has basically no calories, no sugar, and it adds flavor. So you pour hot sauce in your oatmeal and boom, you've got delicious oatmeal with flavor without any of the extra calories or anything like that. Overnight oats. See, my mom's trying to get me into the overnight oats craze, so I might have to try an overnight oat. I'm going to make curry this week. I am. I do do want to get put that in a curry, so I, I do like curry. That sounds good. Malto meal is good. Um, I have no idea. I got I to gotta do some research and find out what, uh, what oats I want to do, because the other problem with oatmeals... Um, so I was just talking about Emmy with this last night that I, I, my, my deep, deep, like medical anxiety, my fear is that I'm going to get, uh, diabetes. And so one of the things that can cause diabetes is carbs, right? Eating too many carbs, uh, they, they turn into sugars. And so oatmeal is basically all carbs. So, um... You know, I gotta find a, a low carb, high fiber, no sugar oatmeal if such a thing exists. And I'm I'm not I'm not confident that such an oatmeal exists, you know? I feel like I'm the only one who eats plain oatmeal. See, plain plain oatmeal, that's that that to me is the weird one. I I, I could not eat just plain oatmeal. That, I feel like that would make me sick. Just plain oatmeal. Substitute in chia seeds. Like, chia pet? Like, grass? Like, I know that sounds dumb. Uh, but I knew, I had a co-worker once who ate literal dirt. Like, he special ordered in uh, nutritious dirt to eat. He imported nutritious dirt and his girlfriend made him eat dirt once a week for dinner so i mean is it so outrageous to think about chia seeds chia pet oatmeals grandpa raised me on butter cream brown sugar it's so good but not good for you <laughs> come get your man he belongs to you now just for you, Dexter, uh, I know we were just talking about not spending frivolous money, but I am trying to set aside a little bit of money to buy the um, the Hot Takes Spicy Opinion games so that I will just have a deck of cards here to be able to draw from uh, bad opinions for us to discuss. So there, the, the, there is a chance we will get bad opinions, uh, and that is going to be worth every every bit of, of money for that. <laughs> sounds horrible just for dexter here's some booze well i don't think it's working today <laughs> sounds horrible <laughs> uh Oh, this guy's not on the permadeath server. That's why he was so casual about this. I thought he was on the permadeath server. You have to be careful eating chai seeds because it'll make your drug test positive. I'm going to have to take a drug test again here soon, aren't I? If I'm going to be out in the job hunting. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mythbusters actually did that one too, didn't they? Um, they use like poppy seeds. Is that what the chia seeds are? So I'm, I'm pretty sure Mythbusters did that in like season one. I don't know how I feel about this. Like I, I just want to be out here leveling. Like I didn't... and. Didn't expect to be out here chatting with this dude, but I guess that's like the classic experience, right? Getting to, uh, getting to hang out with people and chat with them and all that. So, um, let's see. 
See, I need to figure out when, when you guys make little noises like that, um, it, it puts a box permanently on my screen now, and I'm trying to figure out, there it is, fixed it. Not necessarily the state doesn't drug test unless they have probable cause for your cop. <laughs> oh no, it's not you, Dragon. I, I, I already went in and removed it. I had to figure out what was causing that box because I, I was going through and, and watching one of my other streams and that box was there for the entirety. So I need to figure out how to fix that. I was actually considering... So, this is like a pipe dream. So, bear with me. Um... I know this won't happen, and I know I can't be this irresponsible, um, but, like, my desk is an L desk. Um, um, so my desk is this L desk, and right now my work computer takes up half of that. And when I get rid of my work computer, I'm going to rearrange my whole uh, workstation. And I'm very excited for that. Uh, very excited to get to go out and, and redo all of my stuff. But there's a couple things I've always wanted to get. One is that 49-inch super curved Samsung monitor. I always really, really wanted to get one of those, so I've considered that. Uh, but I've also wanted to, like, create a giant open area on my desk to be able to do, like, uh, board games with my camera and, like, my painting with my camera. So I'm, I'm really excited to uh, redo my computer setup when I don't have my work computer and monitor taking up any of my space anymore. I'm really excited to get to revamp my entire stream space. And I'm hoping to revamp my stream, revamp my stream space, and revamp my streaming setup all at once. The problem is that I, I struggle with moderation. We've talked about this before. I, I struggle deeply with moderation. So when I talk about revamping my my stream setup, I'm looking at, you know, a $4,000 water-cooled computer and a $2,000 monitor to, uh, to improve my stream. And there's that, that evil little shoulder devil, right, who goes like, yes, if you, if you spend $6,000 on your streaming setup, you'll definitely get more viewers, more followers. Like, nothing could go wrong doing that. And then, you know, the other part of me is like, you can't lose your job and then spend $6,000 on a stream setup to stream to five people, right? Like, that's just, that's just not, that is not the appropriate response to any of that. So, uh, that's, that's kind of what I'm going back and forth on. But I really am excited to, like, we, were, we counted on stream the other day. I, I'm using 20, 20 USBs on my computer currently. Like, I have two external USBs uh, things, and I'm using 20 USBs in total. And I feel like that's probably wrong. Like, half of them probably don't even plug into anything anymore. So I'm excited to, like, undo this wire mess and undo the, the chaos that is my streaming setup and actually, you know, make it look nice and, and fix it up, so... I am I'm very, very excited for that day to come where I can fix this. I'll probably, honestly, I probably won't even do half of it. I'll probably just call Emmy and be like, Emmy, can you, can you redecorate? Can you fix this, this filthy mess that I have created for myself? So, um, yeah, here's, here's hoping. We're, we're really looking forward to that. I'm really excited to fix my horrible, horrible, messy area. Like, I will, I will, yeah, I, I can't turn my camera around because, again, there's work stuff here. So this is going to look terrible. But just to give you an idea, like, let me take a picture of, like, that's what, oh, my phone's slippery today, apparently. That's what my stream my computer currently looks like. That's the wires 
underneath my computer. Like, look at how awful that is. Like, it is a rat's nest of cords and wires and everything. So I am really excited to fix that, move things around, have a place for Warhammer, for painting, for photography. And, I mean, I'm 30 and Joy is now my organization. I never thought I would get joy out of that, but I, I'm officially old enough that, yes, I get joy out of those things too. Please give me the ability to organize and un unmess up all of this. <laughs> Organization is definitely uh, one of my weak points. I, I am fully prepared to admit my weakness in uh, sorting wires, organization. It is, is definitely one of my struggles. I, I am not ashamed to admit that. Organization is fun and satisfying. There's a bunch of stuff over here. We can't get the bruise weed. But we might be able to pick the briar thorn. I need to get closer. And like I've got so many miniatures to paint now. I really want to paint some miniatures. And it was fun to stream, so I really want to do that, but I want to do it with my professional camera and actually, you know, have it set up, so. One of these streams, we also need to go through photos because there is another photo contest going on and I am bound and determined to win a photo contest. So I'm going to need some of y'all's advice for uh, which ones I need to pick out and put in there and try and win because I need to win a photo contest so bad. You're so cold now? I am excited that the colder weather is moving in. I, I'm, I'm very ready for colder weather. Let's see here. Talent points. Um, I guess we'll just go with a dodge point. We'll, we'll take a little bit more dodge, a little bit less damage. Can definitely do with less damage. I'm not excited about the colder weather. We've just had non-stop like heat wave and we just finally got out of the heat wave. So I'm ready for just easy 70 degree. Like Emmy and I like to go hiking and do things, but when it's so hot outside, like it's just, it's hard to find the motivation to go out there and do those things, right? So I'm, I'm really excited to, to not have to deal with that anymore. All right, got a liver. We can go turn that quest in. Now we can do the killing fields. I'm okay with the heat. It's the cold that gets me. See, I, that's what my parents are doing now. They're they're ready to move to like Arizona for that that nice good heat. So there are six cases of COVID in my area. I have heard mostly from Emmy that uh, COVID is making a resurgence. Like in Texas, they had a whole bunch of cases. So apparently it's it's back with a vengeance and we're, we're going to be dealing with COVID again. Not that we ever stopped dealing with it, but the whole world kind of moved on from it, right? And now we're going to have to unmove on from it. Let's see. We'll keep the Westfall stew. The gnome. Need help? Turn in our livers. Man, our inventory is filling up so fast. So we can kill these dudes if they're level 14, but we want to watch out for the level 15 ones. Which is all that is out here. So I guess we'll go do a different quest for a little bit can do gnolls and trappers, so maybe we should just deal with the, the gnolls and trappers for a little bit. My town's preparing for the zombie apocalypse? I mean, I'd much rather see the towns preparing for these sort of things rather than just ignoring that they 
they happen, right? So I, I would much rather the town be over-prepared rather than under-prepared. Alright, let's go find us some gnolls to pick on and let's avoid that level 19 dust devil is kind of scary, so let's avoid him. I'd rather take on the coyote. I don't think our town's really doing anything for it. I haven't heard or seen anything really, so... town I live in, they believe that the government is trying to turn people into zombies with the COVID case. I mean, with all the, all the conspiracy theories that have been flying around as of late, I guess that's not the most outrageous conspiracy theory I've ever heard, right? Like, I've, I've certainly heard, heard worse than that, so I, I guess, I, I guess... Sure. Why not? Alright. Knolls. We need Knolls and Defias Trappers and Smugglers. It's level 17. Okay. I feel like we shouldn't be out over here. 13... 15. Yeah, maybe we're not ready for any of this. People can be dumb. I say to myself and don't really listen to that crazy nonsense. I mean, I enjoy conspiracies as like a fun thing. I like reading conspiracy theories, but I understand the massive amount of harm that they do and that there are people who cannot who cannot differentiate between what is a conspiracy and what is not a conspiracy so I, I understand that it is it is harmful to people and thus they should not be perpetuated and I understand that and I get that and I respect that but definitely people are frustrating there's, there's no doubts there See, let's make two mana potions and some defense potions. All right. Probably get rid of some of these potions. I honestly have way too many potions. Probably sell that one, that one. Yeah. Need a lot of patience to deal with people like that. I think you can just say you need a lot of patience in general to deal with people. Because sometimes people, as of late, are definitely really good at pushing buttons. Work has been, has been one of those things that has been pushing a lot of buttons for me lately. Alright, let's go up this way. Maybe we can find some enemies we need up here. I don't know, we got the quest for the pocket watch, and that's what quest I died on last time, so I'm kind of nervous to, to do that one. We gotta get rid of a lot of these Defias dudes, but I'm kind of nervous. Okay, they're level 13, level 12, there's a little camp here. Maybe we can take these dudes out for a little bit. Copper vein... Flesh Ripper. Okay, there's some people. People are mentally exhausting. Yes. That is very true. Pokemon DLC tomorrow? I, I was not aware of that. I am so out of the loop on Pokemon that I was not aware that there was a DLC coming out tomorrow. Customers have been pushing your buttons. People on Reddit always talk about, you know, how there's, like, the mandatory 
uh, military service, that instead you should do mandatory service for working in customer service, just so that people will have, you know, a little bit of uh, empathy for people who work in customer service. I get that that would never work, but honestly, um, I'm... I understand it would never work, but it would be very good for people to be able to understand how terrible that customer service is. I'm so excited. You're one of the few people I can watch while playing it. You should be happy. Very happy. I'm very happy to have my, my small community of all y'all who like to hang out and listen to me babble on about all the different things. Yesterday I was supposed to have the day off, but I ended up having a night shift and a double shift because a co-worker didn't show up. See, I remember you talking about that last time you were hanging out with us. And you were saying that, you know, people weren't showing up for their shifts and all that. So is that still an ongoing problem? I thought the management was going to try and help with that a little bit. But, you know, surprise, surprise, management's not doing nothing. I try to show up to your streams. I appreciate that. I know... I know I stream inconsistently and at weird times, so I understand that it's difficult to make the stream sometimes. I also get that World of Warcraft Classic mode is not exactly the most exciting thing to watch as I'm just standing here pressing 1 and 2 over and over and over again, right? So... Boss got mad because she had to go in and work until I got there and it was her day off. Well. <laughs> sounds like that's something that your boss can fix. So if it's upsetting them, maybe they should do something about it. And down goes the trapper. So Max is, that's what I'm saying. It was originally your day off. They're mad because they had to give up their day off. But, like, that's that's totally within their power. If someone's flaking that much, they can fix it. They they have the power to fire these flaky co-workers, right? Or say, hey, you, you've not been doing what you need to do. So, you know, you're, you're going to have to face some, some punishment for it. So if your boss is tired of it, then they're the one who needs to fix it. She won't fire anyone. I have, I have seen a great deal of that, <clears throat> and I, I don't personally fully understand where that comes from. That I, I get like some companies just won't fire anyone because of the liability and all that. But like, you would think that's more of a liability to just never fire anyone. But I, I've never had to fire someone myself, so, um, you know, what do I know? Though it is rough that the company is laying us all off, like, right before Christmas. We're getting laid off November 14th. Like, I get that there's never a good time to fire someone, but, like, yeah, you couldn't have held off until the new year? You had to, had to fire us right before Christmas? Like, was that necessary? Did you Did you plan that? You know, it's the whole, like, never fire people on a Monday, always wait until Friday, like... I, I don't know. Again, I've never had to do that, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but it seems a little cruel. It's three people that need to be fired, but my boss doesn't want to because um, she has to train new people. I mean, let's be real. She wouldn't have to train new people, right? She would just put that work on everyone else. You would have to train new people, so I don't... I don't understand why that's even a concern, right? Because they just usually make someone else do it all. <clears throat> I'm the lowest person on my team with, like, the smallest title. And I had to train five people. And all five of those people that I trained were two job titles or higher above me. So, oh, this is not good. Um... Alright, I guess we're going to have to fight because we're going to run right into those coyotes over there. Well, let's drink a potion. Oh, this is going to be close. 
We just need to hit him once. Okay. Just a little bit more. Alright. Ooh. Leather boots with spirit and stamina? Yes, please. To me, this is classic WoW. Green pants, red shirt, red boots, off-color grayish gloves like the total clown ensemble. Two of the people that need to be fired aren't key holders, so it would be the easiest to replace. So the other one's a key holder, and I was told when a full-time position is open, you could take it. So, of course, one will never open up, right? Because then that means giving you the job, and for some reason... Bosses like to, to keep people, like, part-time. I remember I worked at uh, Roth's, a grocery store, was my first ever job. And I remember thinking, like, I was so impressed with the key people, the key holders. Like, they held so much power with those keys. And now I look at it, I was like, what, what, what power? They're not holding any power. <laughs> like, I can't believe I was ever, like, impressed. With, like, oh, I want to be a key holder. I want to have, I want to have that power. I already know what to do as a key holder because I already work so many nights. See? Just tell them you're already trained. Earth root, peace bloom. Let's grab... Let's grab the earth root. We need that. Let's see the sack of oats that's useful. Two sacks of oats that are useful. Remember Corey when he was promoted to person in charge? He had keys and went on such a power trip. I just want a full time position. See, that I understand. Like, Title and keys aside, just give me full time. Give me my benefits, right? Like, at the very least, give some benefits. No, don't run into that camp. Do not run into the camp. I do remember you saying Corey went on a full power trip when he got the promotion. All right, this is the quest where I died, and I'm really nervous to do this, so I, I, I really, really probably shouldn't even be doing this, but we're, I just I just want to look. That's all I want to do is look. I just need the money. Feel you there. All right. We're just gonna look. We've got a potion. Evasion's up. I remember pulling someone and they just absolutely wrecked me because there's multiple people in there. Yeah, Benny Blanco. So there's two people and he's level 15. So we're gonna we're gonna wait another couple levels before we take on that challenge. Speaking of Christmas, I already started to get early Christmas gifts. You are ahead of the game there. I have not even thought about that. I have no idea what I'm going to do for Christmas this year. Oh, I definitely understand. With everything going on, with how tight money is, all that, don't, don't feel like you need to buy gifts for, for anyone here. You know, take care, take care of yourself first, right? Like, I I understand there's people who love, like, giving gifts. That, like Dex says, I'm skipping Christmas, too broke, need home repairs. Like, I understand there's people who absolutely love giving gifts and doing things like that, but you should never go without yourself just so someone else can have something, right? My dad wants me to get my step-siblings and their kids Christmas gifts, and they have a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's a tough one, because everyone expects gifts, and it just, it gets so expensive. And, you know, when a trip to the grocery store is two, three hundred dollars as it is, 
tell your dad to take out a loan then? I, I thought he already did. <laughs> Sorry, my sass. <laughs> I really don't like my step siblings. They never got me anything before. See that there, there is a great deal of people like that too, who they expect gifts but they never give gifts. That is, oh, don't, don't fight right here. You're gonna pull people over here, and it's gonna be a whole mess. And I don't want to have to deal with it. Oh. Okay, we're safe. It's only paying half of each payment and paying the rest and you're paying the rest. That's still... That's still far too kind of you. I definitely admire... Admire the kindness. I know you don't get, like, a whole lot of choice in it, but... It's one of those things, what's right is right, right? So he should be paying... What? Why did... Why didn't you come over here? I was nowhere near you, Coyote Pack Leader. What the heck was that? The game is just out for blood. I guess I should log off here since they're just... Like, that guy came from half a mile away just to come bite me, like... I haven't agreed to that agreement yet. I wanted to pay all of that. See, definitely, definitely agree he should pay all of that. But here's the hard thing is, like... At some point, he's going to think, well, if I don't, it's your credit that's in danger, right? It's, it's your stuff, not me. So that's that's the danger, right? Is that eventually he's just going to say, well, then what if I don't pay any of it? You're the one on the line, not me, right? So that becomes a whole, whole ordeal to deal with, too. Not saying it's right, just saying you're probably going to have to deal with that. Give me your null paws, please. I need six more. Five more. I don't think it's fair that I have to pay when he's the one who did it. Absolutely it's not fair. Absolutely not. There's a null paw. All right, next your paw. Okay, so the scouts have crossbows, so we we need to remember we are not we are not attacking the scouts because these guys are a huge pain in the butt to fight, and they run away. Okay, so no more scouts. We are not fighting scouts. Let's run back here. Eat some stew. <clears throat> Man, tell ya. One thing that sucks about getting older, allergies. I've become, like, so much more susceptible to allergies than I ever have been. And it's awful. Seems like every bad thing keeps happening to me all at once, and I don't know how much I can take. <laughs> so... What I'm going to say, I understand in the moment, does not help with that necessarily. But it is something that, as I've looked at my life in retrospective, like, I, I, I understand it. My father always told me his favorite saying when I was growing up and facing problems was that the tree that faces no storm or no wind while growing will break at the first storm. Essentially saying that be, be thankful you're suffering stress now because then it won't break you later. 
And he always would remind me that you're you're bent, you're not broken. Remember, you're, you're bending with the wind, you're bending with the storm, but it's not breaking you. And again, I understand that does not help in the moment, but that is that has been the perspective that I try and see every adversity in my life through. And it has helped me a great deal. Along with, I know we talk religion on this channel. Um, there is a novena that I did that's essentially, oh my Jesus, I trust in you. Take care of everything. And you're just, you're surrendering it all to God. Let God handle it. And there is a, a great peace and calm that comes with, with that. And that, that's honestly why I can sit here and talk so, so casually about losing my job and, you know, like, oh, maybe I won't be able to pay the mortgage. Well, you know, God takes care of everything, right? So there's no point in me worrying about it right now because there's nothing I can do about it right now. So, I, again, I know that those aren't necessarily helpful piece of advice, but those are the things that have gotten me through a great deal of adversity. So try, try the surrender prayer. <clears throat> Remember that you're bent, you're not broken, and and maybe maybe that can help you get through it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to lose my faith and struggling mentally. Hey, there's there's nothing wrong with that. And I know that sounds wrong of me to say, uh, but it, I mean, it literally just happened to me. I hit my breaking point when I found out I was losing my job, and I I, I went to confession over. It. I told the priest, I was like, I. I know that I'm not supposed to lose faith in God. I know that I'm not supposed to doubt God. But when you're told that your whole identity, your whole job, your whole safety net, and everything is just going to come crashing down, I think the human response is to lose faith. And I think a part of a part of faith is is being able to look at that and say, okay, I lost it there. And then finding again and finding God through where is God in this adversity? Where is God in all this, right? The story of Job, basically, that that's all the story of Job is about. So I don't necessarily think it's something to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. I think it's something that we all all go through. So I, I don't I know there's some people who are really bad about, you know, like, oh, well, once saved, always saved. Jesus loves me, so I don't ever have any doubts. I know God always loves me, but like, we're real here. We're human here, right? We we all experience doubt. We all experience the, the losing of faith and going through. Um, you know, uh, Mother Teresa, uh, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, comes to example with the the dark night of the soul, right? You're talking a lady who dedicated her life to trying to help people and wrote in her journal that for like 40 years she didn't feel the love of God, that she felt like she was talking to no one and felt no warmth, no joy, nothing. And yet she just pushed on saying, I, I know that what I'm doing is right. I know that what I'm doing would please God. So I'm going to continue to do it, hoping that I'm right, having faith that it's the right thing to do. So, you know, even if, if we look to the saints who struggle like that, you know, what what chance do you or I have? So, it's okay to wrestle with it. It's okay to struggle with it. I, 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 one of the things we talked about in my RCIA class that I absolutely loved was someone asked the question, and it, it sounds like a dumb question, but it's really not. And it, it's a simple question, like, am I allowed to be mad at God? And people kind of snicker, and it's like, well, no, you can't be mad at God. Like, God is God. You can't be upset at him. Well, no, that's that's not right. That's not fair. We're humans. We have emotions. I think it's absolutely okay to be mad at God and say, I don't understand this. I'm frustrated with this. I'm frustrated with you. Granted, that conversation should eventually lead to something else, right? It should be, I, I'm mad because I see my shortcomings or because I'm not understanding this or that. or you know, It should be more than just, I'm mad at you. But that's that's the start, right? Like, that's, that's where we all start. Square one is, it's okay to feel those frustrations. It's okay to be mad as long as you then say, okay, I've acknowledged my feelings. I acknowledge that I'm feeling mad. Now what am I going to do about it? So I know it's kind of a long-winded rant, but I think it's a really important topic because there's there's some people out there who feel like, well, you, you're not allowed to be mad at God. You're not allowed to say, 
no to God. You're not allowed to to be upset. You have to always pretend like everything's perfect and you understand everything perfectly and that there's no wrong in your life and that nothing goes bad. Like it's just it's so fake. It's so so artificial that it doesn't get to the core of what Christianity should be. When you're just out there like, yep, I'm so happy, God is so good, he does everything right by me, and I never have anything to complain about. Like, I guess good for you, but that's that's just not real. That's not that's not what most people experience, right? And a big part of the human experience is being able to relate to other people. So if you can't relate to other people, then then you're you're failing at that human communication. People fail to realize that you need a relationship with Christ, and part of that is open and honest communication. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, like, God knows everything, all right, right? If, if, if you believe in God and believe that God is omnipotent, it's not like, it's not like you'd be like, well, I'm mad at God, but I'm not going to say it to him, right? He he'll he won't know that I'm hiding it. Like, you, you believe that God is all-powerful and all-knowing, but can't tell when you're lying to him? Like, that's, that's just absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> quick topic change that I just remembered though I wanted to talk about also uh, Emmy and I finally got to watch the new season of My Hero Academia and holy cow is it so good like I love season 4 season 4 is probably one of my favorite seasons and this one is just blowing it out of the water I'm not going to give any spoilers I'm, I'm not doing I'm no spoilers Dexter don't worry I'm not going to spoil it but man, oh man, is it amazing. Might be the best season, period. And not just like the best season, but like... Top 10 anime moments of all time. Finally watched Attack on Titan. I need to get through that. Emmy and I start Attack on Titan like four times a year. We'll say, okay, we're going to finally watch this. And then we never get farther than, like, three episodes in Season 1. Like, for some reason, that one we, we cannot get through Attack on Titan. But I've heard nothing but great things about it. You have to go see it. It's heartbreaking and stressful. It is. It is a very stressful season. It's because Attack on Titan disturbs me. There's certainly some disturbing stuff in Attack on Titan. The, the Titan faces are definitely creepy. Alright, this should be my last null. This should be, we should kill this guy. Go back to town, turn in the quests. Season 5 or 6. Uh, we're watching season 6. 5 is pretty good too. 5 has some good moments, but season 6 is just... Amazing. Took me a while to get into it. Have you watched any of the spin-offs? I know that there's like the there's like the they're in junior high or something like there's the high school spin-off of it. I haven't seen 6. I'm waiting for it to come out on DVD. Oh, you're missing out so much, Dexter. It is it is incredible anime, incredible TV, incredible story building. Like I here, here's how good it is. The only complaint that I can muster up for season six of My Hero Academia is I don't like the intro music. I like the intro. I like the art style. Um, but I don't like the the intro music. And if that's my only complaint, I mean, that should just tell you how amazing it is. I'm watching Fairy Tale. I have never actually watched Fairy Tale. Watching season four. Season four, I love season four. Apparently, apparently season four is one of the most hated seasons of My Hero Academia. And I'm pretty sure that's because of the gentle criminal arc. But I love season four. Like, you get all the stuff with Aerie. You get I Am Still a Million. You get so much good stuff. Like, I, I just, I don't see how you could... I just don't see how you could not like season four. It is so good. I highly recommend Fairy Tale. I, I've heard people recommend Fairy Tale. I assume that it's like most uh, 
shonen from its age, so Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, kind of that that whole vibe. I'm assuming it's it's very very similar to those. I seem to recall watching one or two episodes of it actually, and that Emmy hit on. I, I'm pretty sure I watched one or two episodes of Fairy Tale. Now that I'm thinking about it, and I dropped it for the the sexualization that it was very very fan servicey, and I didn't think Emmy would like it. So now that I'm thinking on it, I'm pretty sure that's that's why we haven't watched Fairy Tale. Down goes that guy. Run in between the coyotes. Let's go turn in our quest. Sell some stuff on the auction house. Doesn't really show anything? I could be misremembering. I mean, most anime has some sort of uh, fan service, so it's, it's hard to remember them all. Even My Hero Academia has too much fan service. I really hate the amount of fan service they do in it. <clears throat> but I was thinking like, um... Inuasha. I used to like Inuasha back in the day, and Naruto's pretty guilty of this too, right? That the they literally just have a character that's called the pervert, and their whole job is they just walk around inappropriately touching people. And like, I understand that there's there's cultural differences and media differences. There's a whole lot of differences. I just I can't I can't. I can't comprehend a world in which someone says, you know what this anime needs? We need a character named Pervert who walks around and touches girls' butts. That that will really make this anime top tier. Like I just I just don't understand I don't understand where that comes from. I, I don't understand that thought. You need something? Have a good one. Alright, turn in the Knoll stuff. And we're going to fly back to Stormwind because we have a gun to sell and some money to make. That's all right, Dragon. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I'm not going to stream for much longer, honestly. I'm, I'm flying to town to turn some stuff in and then I'm done myself. So thanks for hanging out today and have a good day. Let's go make some money on the auction house. And get some rested experience so that we can hit level 13. And that'll be the highest we've ever made it is level 13. We're a long, long ways away from level 60. A very, very long way away. Have we bought... We need to visit our trainer, too, because I feel like we need to get parry. Which will be very good for us. That's a little bit more defense. So we'll get parry. So we can uh, repost. I will never understand all the people who fought for classic WoW style talents saying that they really preferred this style of talents. Like, really? You you preferred leveling up and getting plus 1% dodge? That was... That was exciting? Because that's... That is not very exciting to me, but I guess to each their own. Alright, to the auction house. Hopefully this compact shotgun will bring us in. I'm going to hope for... 7 silver? 
I think seven silver is reasonable. Five, fifteen, and sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so let's do three and twelve. Let's check weapons. Ooh, short Sword of the Raider, that's really good. Get some stamina. Really expensive though, so maybe if that maybe if that sells. Let's check the leather armor. Anything good here? Gloves of spirit. That's not bad. Not bad for eight silver, maybe that. Really good there. Stamina and intellect. Intellect, stamina, spirit. Spirits, intellect, spirits, stamina. A little bit of agility. Okay. All right, we got some goals there. I'm not going to bore you guys with running all the way to the class trainer and selling, so I think we will end here. So as always, let's end with our prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, thank you for this blessed day. Today we pray for those who are still impacted by natural disasters, the wildfires, the tsunamis, all those sort of things. Lord, help all those people to recover, help their families to be safe, and help them to have their basic needs met. We pray for those who are struggling with mental illness, those who are struggling with physical illness. Lord, help to heal all of us who are reaching out to you for help in, in our sickness and in our pains and in our burdens. And finally, we pray for those who have no one left to pray for themselves, those holy souls in purgatory who are awaiting their final cleansing so they can enter your everlasting kingdom of love. Lord, help those souls. All this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for hanging out today. Thank you for spending a little bit extra time with waffles. Appreciate it. I will probably stream again on Thursday or Friday. So I kind of got a little bit of a busy week here, so I will see you all again soon. Have a blessed evening and a wonderful day.